On the bench in front of me I have four different air tools. These two are impact tools. This is an air ratchet and this is an air die grinder. All of them share one thing in common. They all have air motors or a vane air motor. These two have a hammering mechanism or an impact mechanism. The air ratchet has a ratcheting mechanism and some reduction gears. And the die grinder is the most simple of all of these. Basically this uh, tool attachment connects directly to the end of the motor and turns at the speed of the motor. And so that is just a direct drive. I'm going to take apart this impact gun in this video and explain how the air motor works. In a future video I will take apart the hammering mechanism and uh, explain how that works as well. Okay, so I've set aside the other tools and I've taken a couple of bolts out already just to speed up the process and now I'll take out the remaining two bolts There's the gasket and this is the rear housing and this is the motor Okay, I'll explain some of this now. Your air hose hooks up here. The air travels up to a valve. When you pull the trigger, you activate that valve. That allows the air pressure to come out of this hole. It flows out of that hole into the back cover, into this center hole, and then out of this side or this side depending on which way you have your selector switch. So one passage is for forward and one passage is for reverse. On the back of the air gun we have a passage for forward and one passage for reverse. The air goes in through one of these holes here or here and then travels in to these holes for forward or these holes for reverse and it also goes in this cutaway area into the motor itself. We also have a locating pin here that locks everything together there is a notch in the rear cover there by my thumb that that pin goes into. We'll remove the rotor and the rear motor cover. If it's in forward, the air will go in on this side. If it's in reverse, the air will go in on this side. I'll explain a little bit more about that later. Let's see if we can pull this out. There is the motor housing. Oh, the front motor cover might be a little bit tricky to get out. This might work. There we go. Okay. So all the rest of these bits have to do with the impact. So we'll set that aside. So this is all the pieces to the motor. We have the rear motor cover and bearing, the rotor, the rotor fins, the motor housing, a locator pin, and the front motor housing. As you can see, 
the locator pin locks all three of these pieces into line so that when the air travels in it goes into the right passage. And I'll take this back card again and explain how it works. Okay. So the air comes in through these passages and as I said before some of it goes through these holes to the other end and some of it goes into the motor here. Right there at the tip of my screwdriver there's a hole. On the front motor housing there's a hole here and a hole here. In the front motor cover this hole goes to this passage and this hole goes to this passage. In the rear motor cover it would have the same passages. What they're there for is to push these fins out into the motor housing wall. As you can see the fins just sit off to one side. So what happens when the air pressure comes through these passages it goes in through these holes and the air pressure goes in behind this fin and pushes it out into the wall like so. The air that is going into the motor through this area pushes this fin around so that it can escape out of the bottom. The air is trying to escape out through these bottom holes. So because the air only has one place to escape it will push its way down until it goes out the bottom and it just keeps doing that. As long as you hold the trigger on there's air coming in pushing these fins out and there's air going into this motor spinning it around. And that is how the motor works.